thank you so much for joining me on at Follow the White Rabbit with Susie. I wonder how deep the rabbit hole goes sometimes. And this channel is here to explore with you a variety of ways of living this life as a human being on planet Earth. So today I'm introducing another arm of this channel and it's the Pocketbook Library. So stay tuned and I'll be over in a minute. Hello and welcome to a brand new aspect of At Follow the White Rabbit with Susie. It's about something called the Pocketbook Library. One night I couldn't sleep and I had this idea running through my head and it transferred into a little book called I Am. It's probably the simplest book that you could buy that is not a journal. And essentially what it's encouraging you to do is change your mind about yourself. So every day you walk through this book with I Am statements. And with these I am statements, you make notes. So when it says, I am joyful, you actually ask yourself, am I? What is bringing me joy? And when things aren't bringing you joy, it asks you to think about things that are or might bring you joy. So that was where this conversation started. And then another sleepless night, <laughs> the idea of the pocketbook library series came in and all I understood at that moment was that it's self-help books by gifted and knowledgeable people and with me today is my lovely friend Gavin oh Daisy was with you a moment ago has she gone <laughs> hello Daisy um, and so Gavin and I've been friends for a while now and I know so many incredible people with incredible gifts and skills. And I love the fact that when we write our heart out into a book, it's just brilliant because people then that we don't know can pick it up and it can help them heal. So the idea came that this pocketbook series were just a series of really small books that were really affordable. So at the moment, and this is going to change because um, Amazon are changing, uh, they're £4.50. So they might go up to a five of them, but they're still cheap, incredible little books. And the next book that came on the agenda was Renew. And this was a, around people who seem to have lost themselves and want to find that passion for life again. You know, that burnout that happens to most of us, uh, writer's block, artist block, work block, relationship blocks. And this is actually to get you back to where you want to be. And then, so I can introduce you to Daisy's dad, <laughs> Gavin Botel, actually wrote this amazing book. And Gavin, I'd love you to tell us a little bit about it. I'm going to just open up a few pages. I want pictures of you. Bear with me. So there's these beautiful pictures and you will recognize the man sitting before you is such a man here. So very clever. I don't know why you've got pink lipstick. I think it must be something. Oh yes, it must be the filter. <laughs> yeah, it must be a filter. I didn't know that was on. <laughs> okay. So I'll leave you, Gavin, just to talk a little bit about this, please. So it's nice to be with you this morning, Susie, and um, thank you for inviting me to write this book. Uh, it's interesting uh, how sometimes things just fall into place, because last year when we first talked about this, uh, I was already putting a course together for uh, CPD, for therapists, a one-day course. And the more... I looked at it and the more I considered what would go in and how it would be structured, I found there's a lot of unnecessary stuff mm. um, and things that can detract 
And a lot of books, they contain case studies about other people who aren't you, who aren't me, whose problems aren't like ours. Mm. Um, and so I wanted to create a course that had none of the fluff in it, but just all of the advanced techniques, which is what I ended up doing. And then you invited me to write the book. And I did the same thing with the book. So I took out all of the fluff and just left uh, the essentials of EFT, of emotional freedom technique. And as I was writing it, I found myself allowing the authorial voice to become stronger and stronger <laughs> um, and was wondering, is this going to sound flippant or is my sense of humour going to come across? <laughs> And it was quite frightening <laughs> because if you don't know how you're coming across, that could be quite, <laughs> quite something to uh, be faced with at the end of it. But it's been really well received. Yeah. And several of the reviews that have been uh, posted on Facebook and Amazon are from therapists mm -hmm. who are recommending the book mm -hmm. to their own clients, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Good. So. It has introdu introductions to EFT, to stress, really, at the beginning, introduction to stress, how stress affects the body, and then how EFT counters stress by having a positive effect on things like our blood pressure, mm -hmm. our heart rate, our immune system, reducing cortisol levels. And whenever I practice this with clients, those things that I can't see, their blood pressure, their in increased immune response, uh, decrease in cortisol, are given evidence by the fact that the clients also feel so much more calm now. Yeah. I feel safe now. Um, I feel peace. And it's an absolutely brilliant tool yeah. for therapists, and for clients, for people who have the day-to-day -day stresses that they take for granted, you know, the commute, mm -hmm. the crappy boss, the person at work that doesn't pull their weight, the child that's been teasing forever, uh, you know, caring for older adults, all of those things that most of us have to do at some point uh, that we do willingly, but are still nonetheless stressful. Can be made less stress free, sorry, less stressful, yeah. uh, and have less anxiety in them if we know how to practice EFT. And do, do you want to show people what EFT is? Because there might be people here who've never heard of it. Indeed. So the little picture that um, you showed. Um, do you want me to hold that up for you? There we go. Yeah. One. Um, EFT is like emotional acupuncture, but we're not using needles. Mm -hmm. But we're using the same points that would be used uh, in acupuncture, but we're tapping on them. So we would use the karate chop point, which is the side of the hand, and the top of the head, which is known as the place of a thousand meetings or place of a hundred meetings. And then the eyebrow point, and then beside the eye, and under the eye, under the nose, the chin, the collarbone, and then under the arm, and then the other spot there is the sore spot, mm. which is on the chest there. And these are all um, meridian points. Yeah. So, for example, uh, the one under the chin and the one under the um, top lip there, the governing vessel and the central vessel. The karate chop point is the, uh, sorry, the K27 point, the collarbone, is kidney meridian. And then under the eyes is stomach meridian. Mm. And this came about in the 80s. There was a psychiatrist called Dr. Roger Callahan, uh, who had a client called Mary. And she had the most intractable water phobia he had ever encountered. He tried everything. Rational emotive therapy, CBT, hypnosis, systematic desensitization, flooding, nothing worked. 
And one day she sat there in front of him telling the story over again about how bad she felt when thinking about water. She even would wake in the night from nightmares that the water was trying to get her. Mm. And as she was talking, she said she feels queasy. So Callahan, who had been interested in traditional Chinese medicine, reached over and started tapping her under the eye, which was the stomach meridian, which is a reasonably enough jump to do, I suppose, connected to the stomach where we feel queasiness. And after about two minutes, she stood up, kicked off her sandals and ran out of his consultation room, which being in California, uh, had a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. uh, outside she ran to the swimming pool and she started to splash the water in her face and giggle and when he caught up with her he reminded her be careful you don't know how to swim and she said I don't want to swim I just want to paddle in it so she swung her feet round and she was kicking in the water wow that night there was a storm and for the first time in her life she was free of the fear of the storm and drove out in the rain, which was something she had never been able to do, and walked into the ocean up to her waist, and her fear never came back. Wow. So of course, Callahan decided he was going to try this sort of thing with other clients, and it didn't work. <laughs> but rather than give it up, he continued to find out what sequences needed to be used he had an idea that it might be a specific sequence. So he created algorithms and a, a diagnostic method for finding the exact sequence. But uh, then came along the Stanford educated engineer, Gary Craig, who was taught by Callahan. And he took the effective thought field therapy that Callahan had created and streamlined it into the uh, effective emotional freedom technique. Mm. And when I say effective, there is a paper from an alternative medicine journal about nursing that claims 98% efficacy for EFT. And that would be with uh, fears, phobias, depression, things like agoraphobia, claustrophobia, um, complex trauma, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and so on, weight loss, cravings, cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, and so on, uh, can all be treated using EFT. And it's so simple that it's even taught to children in some schools. Yeah. And uh, children are encouraged to help each other when they, you know, if a friend feels upset to use EFT. And it's I a really lovely, gentle therapy. It is. I used to teach um, my children um eft as well and i think it was it's a great emotion regulator isn't it and it's the yes. way to actually change the story yes that we carry in our minds that may or may not have any foundation in truth well the the discovery statement is that the cause of all negative emotions is a disruption of the body's energy system yeah. and so unlike other forms of therapy where we'll look for conflicts in parts of the psyche or changing behavior to change thoughts. Uh, in EFT, we change the body's energy system Absolutely. in order to realign the person. Yeah. And one of the two of the things that you said earlier about um, renew, changing the mind about self. Mm. Gary Craig often talked about the writing on our walls that we consult the writing on our walls all the time, mm -hmm. which tell us what our limitations are. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, as, as well as, you know, the positive things about us. But we consult these writings on our wall all of the time. Mm -hmm. And he often uh, said to people that they need to consult the writings on their wall using EFT yeah. and tap them out, mm -hmm. using something called the personal peace procedure. And so I use three pages in the book for people to make their own notes yeah. uh, using the personal peace procedure to move from that prison of limitations 
into what Craig called the palace of possibilities. Yeah, that, and, and that's absolutely true with EFT. It really is the most phenomenal tool um, that you anybody can use. And you don't have to have a therapist with you at all. And I think it's sometimes useful to have a therapist teach you what you need and to help you with your programme. But once you've got that, you can use that. And certainly a friend of mine was wheelchair bound for quite some time and made her mind up that this was not the way she was going to live her life. She was young. Mm. And so she used EFT to get herself out of that wheelchair and walking again. And she did it. And, it, and she put all of the praise onto EFT. Um, I put the praise onto her unconscious mind as well, the fact that she reprogrammed it. It's a bit like the I am statement, isn't it? It's a renewal of you know, I am. Um, so yeah, I'm really delighted. And and I, you've really had some success with this, which is marvellous. And I think it, for £4.50, I think it's a book worth four times oh. as good as that. It's more than a bargain. <laughs> so grab it quick before the prices go up, guys. Um, it will be probably the best £4.50 you spend so thank you so much, Gavin. And I think we have plans for more. Is that right? At yes, there point. is going to be several other books. Um, there's there's one I, I'm hoping to share with you soon uh, using uh, Hawaiian spiritual techniques for letting go of things that no longer serve us. And that's one of my other favourite tools as well. It's interesting. And um, as you meet more and more of the authors, you'll realise that we, we are constantly in the process of learning and seeking new ways, easier ways for ourselves to transform, but also for our clients to transform. So I always say that I'm like Mary Poppins. I've got one of those bags that... All sorts of things come out of it. But like we were talking just before we came on, we don't know what tools we're going to really use until the client's in front of us. Right. That's right. Uh, because the, you, the client, determine what we need to support you with. The fourth book in the series, the Pocketbook Library series, and I actually wrote that copy on the back here, um, because I actually changed the title of the series, Naughty Girl. And this is a very simple book, once again, about how we as educators, and we are educators if we're parents, therapists, teachers, teaching assistants, youth workers, whatever, how when we get this all sorted out in ourselves, we can teach these simple tools to children to help them with their anxieties, to help them with their learning. And I often say to my daughter, if you only stop thinking, you'd be able to learn much easier. So, oh. <laughs> and what I mean by that really is that if you think you can't, as Henry Ford said, you can't. <laughs> so you can't learn if you're saying things like, I'm rubbish at maths, I'm rubbish at art. So as a parent, for myself, I've had to do the work to conquer my fears in order that I can grow adults, which is what this is all about. Again, really simple, uh, lots of different quotes of different people that have said things like, education breeds confidence, confidence breeds hope, hope breeds peace. And that was Confucius. So you've got some nice little quotes in there that you can use. Um, Oh, and I love this one. Wisdom is not a product of schooling, but of the lifelong attempt to acquire it. And that was our lovely Al Al Albert Einstein. So mm. the pocketbook library is that. It's the idea is that really inexpensively, you can buy some books for yourself and for your friends, nice little stocking fillers, nice little birthday presents, the price of a card, for goodness sake aren't they? And you can build your library of self-help tools that will guide you into the life you choose. So, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm really excited. So we will be back, Gavin, next 
probably next week or the week after because we've got a few more books online ready to go um and our sort of long-term plan in 2024 is that we're going to have a summit all of these amazing authors uh, with all their knowledge and skills are going to come together for a whole weekend and we're going to just play and we're going to learn and we're going to grow so I'm really excited about that so how it, it we'd no idea how many books will be there this time next year but it's going to be a good weekend so it's like a retreat but online so that wherever you are in the world you can join us <laughs> I look forward to that yeah it's going to be great Thank you so much, Gavin, for being the very first author that um, multi-author series has got and delighted with your book. And I'm one of those people who advocate it. And it's really, really easy, easy book to follow. Um, you can't get it wrong. <laughs> You're not with this level of advice. And as you say, no fluff. This is how you do it. Just do that. And, you know. It, it's a skill you'll never regret having so thank you my love and uh, thank you for watching thank and you we'll have see a great day. You very shortly thank you with another author hopefully next week or the week after thank you Bye -bye. so if you've enjoyed this channel and this introduction to the pocketball library and you'd like to find out more go to the rest of the videos online they're there for you why do we make these videos in order that you can become uh, more enlightened or have some fun or find an oasis of calm in your busy day? So real life people telling you real life things and real life stories. And we really appreciate it if you would like, subscribe and comment. It's those three actions that actually improve the possibility of this channel reaching more people. So if you share it, that's even better if you could share it on your social media, on your websites, anywhere that you find that other people might appreciate what is happening here. Please go on to Amazon and look for these books. I will put all the links below and, you know, grow with us. And if you are an author, who's got something burning inside of you that will fit this ethos, then let me know. And it would be great to have a chat with you. Thank you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.